I was looking for a resource on YouTube about the digital pathology workflow and I didn't find anything. So I decided to make one for you. So the problem with digital pathology workflow, unlike a digital radiology workflow, is that we still have the analog pathology workflow. Everything is there and then we add scanning, image management and a couple of different things on top of the analog digital pathology workflow. It's sometimes difficult to see the added value. The added value very much comes in the latter part of digital pathology, meaning image analysis, but in the process, what's the added value if we have to add overhead? Well, the good news is that the automation advancements are really, really good now, and many of the manual steps can be replaced by automation. Let's go through all the steps in the digital pathology workflow. Before we even think of scanning, we have to collect the tissue, process the tissue, produce glass slides. I'm not going to talk about these in detail because they are part of the classical pathology workflow and you can find plenty of resources about that. But the digital starts with scanning. The prepared tissue sections are scanned using a digital scanner and the scanner captures high resolution images of the specimen at different magnifications and at all the places, usually as a tile or as a line and they are then stitched together generating a high resolution digital image that's dynamic, dynamic meaning zoomable. We have a digital microscope experience. And there are two steps in addition to the scanning, before you scan and after you scan. Currently being done most of the time manually, which is causing resistance when going digital, but they can both be automated. Step number one before scanning is preparing the slides for scanning. And how do you prepare? You want to have them clean without any dust particles or anything, and you have to load them into the scanner. How can you replace them with automation? The cleaning thing I have seen being replaced with post-scanning image analysis doesn't really matter if they're cleaned or not. The loading, I have already seen robots that are loading the slides into the scanners. So here a fantastic potential of manual labor elimination. So now we have the images scanned, what's next? Well, they need to be managed. We are no longer in the era of putting them in some folder and manually naming them. The image files are being named automatically and they should be automatically placed into the places where then later the viewers, the pathologists or the scientists can access them. So here we enter the step of image management. Image management software is usually coupled with image viewing software, although the image viewing can take part at the different steps of the process. While scanning, you can view the labels of the slide or the high level view of the slides. Scanners usually have a viewing software and image management programs also have a viewing software. So there must be viewing embedded into this process because it's a digital file. If you don't have a viewer that can show it to you. You cannot really do digital pathology. Once we have the images in the image management system in the right places, accessible to all the right people with the right permission, we can do two things in parallel or sequentially. First, we can do image analysis on those images. And this is the added value that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. This is something that cannot happen if the slides are not digitized. This is like the mega added value of digital pathology. You can do image analysis and you can now do really crazy, funky stuff with image analysis. You can predict molecular markers with image analysis from h &E slides. You can predict survival. You can replace IHC markers by information generated from h &E. So now this field of image analysis is really booming because of the introduction of deep learning into the computer vision area of computer science and more on that in our videos. But deep learning is powerful and we can extract super important information from images that we couldn't extract before. And the second thing Thing that's happening once we have the images managed and digitized is the pathological diagnosis. So basically pathologists, instead of looking at the microscope, they're looking at the computer screen and viewing those images on a computer screen. This is where the diagnosis is happening. And after the diagnosis, we have reporting. The pathologist needs to report the findings, report the diagnosis, report the results of image analysis. And then this goes to whoever is using this information. It can be the research group that's using this data 
data, if it's not necessarily diagnostic data, it can be totally research data. Anybody who takes this data and uses it to generate further insights gets this report. Next step is archiving and retrieval of images. This is something kind of forgotten because everybody focuses on the first part of digital pathology and image analysis, diagnosis, but what happens later with those images? The glass slides, you would put them in the basement or your archive and they would be there forever and you could take them anytime from the basement. You would have to sort through them, but that was a physical analog thing that anybody could imagine. For the digital archiving and retrieval, you have to figure out your archiving solution your retrieval solution. So you probably have heard, oh, local storage, hard drives are not an option anymore. What about cloud storage? So there is a lot of discussion about that. But regardless what you decide for, you have to have a way to archive them and retrieve them together with all the data necessary for those images. So the metadata are already embedded in the image. So like what specimen it is, what stain it is, and everything that comes with this image in the file. But maybe also you want to archive or link it to the report, link it to the other imaging like radiology or anything else that you want to have associated with this case or with this project. And the last but definitely not least step is quality control. And actually, it's not one last step that you can apply at the end. It's something you have to do throughout the pipeline, throughout the digital pathology workflow. So first, quality control of the whole system has to be set up at the beginning and maintained. Digital pathology often takes place in a regulated environment. So you have to comply with the regulation. You have to validate your machines. You have to validate your software. You have to validate your process. It's not something that you can just freestyle. You need to know in which regulatory framework you're operating and adhere to the guidelines of this very framework. And for the quality control of certain steps in the workflow, I mentioned the cleaning of the scans before scanning and checking the quality of scans after scanning, but there is more to quality control. So number one, we have to verify the tissue labeling. We need to have the correct label on the correct image. We need to evaluate the tissue quality. What happens is that my eyes and human eyes are very good at seeing through artifacts, but a scanner is not. For anatomic pathology, you scan slides at one level, at one focus level, and everything has to be in focus. So you need to take digital pathology into account already when preparing slides. They have to be thin, they should not have any folds, they are a lot less permissive to artifacts. The slide the IQC step I mentioned after scanning makes sure that the images are of diagnostic quality. That means that there's enough tissue and ideally all the tissue in focus, enough diagnostic material for the pathologist to make a diagnosis or for the researcher to find the relevant areas and answer the research question. And very good news, even though a lot of labs are doing this manually and many man hours are being used to do this, this can totally be automated. This part of the workflow can be replaced by image analysis, by quality control algorithms that are trained for the different artifacts, detect them and can even automatically trigger a rescan. This is what one of my sponsors, Pramana, is doing. They have this embedded into the scanning process. Regarding the scanner itself, we need to validate the scanning parameters, that the scanning parameters are giving us the diagnostic image and we have to calibrate the scanner to be sure that the colors are represented adequately. And then a topic of itself, when we do image analysis, we always have to control the quality of image analysis results. And I have a separate video about that that I will link in the cards. So to recap, we can divide those steps into the digital pathology workflow and the quality control components. And the digital pathology workflow consists of one, specimen collection, two, tissue processing, three, digital scanning, four, image management, five, image analysis, six, diagnosis and reporting, seven, archiving and retrieval, and eight, quality control. And now the quality control steps. First, verification of tissue labeling. Second, evaluation of tissue quality. Third, review of digital images. Can be visual, can be automated. Four, validation of scanning parameters. Five, calibration of the digital scanner, and six, quality control of image analysis.